Hello, I am Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 53 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. I did get some knitting done this week. My sweater is still a long work in progress. I brought it to my knitting group because I'm sitting there for two hours. I thought, okay, I'm going to just knock out several rows. But I get sidetracked, and I get, you know, start talking. So this, I did bring it with me. This was the only thing I worked on for my two hours. And this is all... I got done. Actually, this isn't all I got done. I ended up doing more because I felt so bad. I think maybe I got a, an inch done. But then since my meeting on Wednesday, today is Sunday, I'm actually taking this a day early. Um, I got maybe two inches, two and a half inches done on this this week. So I still have probably another mm, 10 inches to go on it. Um, just going to just keep working at it. I think, you know, once I do the sleeves, those will go quick because I think this is 150 some stitches I'm having to knit pearl knit pearl and that's just kind of boring for me so I ended up doing some other things I was going to do um, a little tutorial on this but I was just sick and tired of seeing them lay around I wanted to finish them because I'm tying the little spatula scrubbers to these and I want to get them ready to be put away so that I they're not laying around it so I crocheted these three finished these so now I can attach the scrubbers to them and then I also made two new scrubbers. I was done making my scrubbers, but my daughter wanted to, the, she has some kitchen utensils in this mint green color. So I ordered this two pack. I couldn't just find one little one. And it actually turned out to be better because her and her husband have those big Stanley cups. And I think this, this is 10 and a half inches. This is the perfect size to scrub and clean those cups. So I've got two of them. Um, and I'll put in the show notes, I cast on 14 um, for this. And I'm going to probably, I want, I did this uh, tutorial on this and I wanted to do it in my shorts, but apparently to do it in your shorts, you have to upload it through your phone or tablet. You can't do it on your computer, which I did. So it ended up on my regular list of videos. So I might re-release it and do it as a short, but uh, this one I'll put in the show notes. I cast on 14 for the bigger one. And then I did, I think last week I shared, I'd made one of these and given it away and the girls, the other girls that also went to Texas Tech, liked them and said they didn't have any of these. So I made these two for them, which will go with their jar opener and their uh, spatula scrubbers. That I'll put those with those for Christmas gifts. And not that I need any more yarn, but I went to Joann's. I was looking for some variegated Christmas colored yarn, the red, green, and white variegated. They did not have it at Joann's. Uh, if anyone knows, if I haven't been to Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but if you've been there recently, and they have some type of variegated Christmas yarn, please put it in my comments and I will check it out in my area to see if they have it. But what I did find at Joann's was this Juicy Couture Luxe Velour Sparkle. It's 98% polyester and 2% metallic. And this is what the label looks like. And this is the yarn. I don't know if you can see it's sparkly and it's really soft. It's kind of like the blanket yarn, but it's more of a velvety feel. And I didn't, I'm gonna, I'm going to come up with a pattern and I'll put it in my show notes because it was trial and error. How many to cast on, what needles to use. What this is, I ended up doing US 11s um, on the circulars, but I had to buy, I don't know what brand these are. These are Chow Goose, but if you can see, they're two different sizes, the tips. This one comes a little further down. So I started out using these needles and I had to cast on 50 stitches so that I can knit on it. And this was what it was with 50 stitches. And it was, it's kind of bulky. I don't like it as much. So then I thought, okay, I'll try my double pointed needles because these, whatever brand they are, were a little bit too long. The tips are a little too long. So then I thought I have these US 11s double points. And so I put it on this, but it was, these are too, um, too long. And I think I did 40, 40 stitches on this. And it was just cumbersome because they were, you know, getting in my way. So I switched to my shorter double points right here, which worked a lot better. So these are the shorter double points I used for these and I cast on 40 and I did nine rows. And this is, this I, I ended up um, sewing this the opposite direction. So it's the garter stitch. So I did like the way that looked. Uh, I thought the nine rows with 40 stitches was good. But then I went to Fiber Lady this week and he's got a huge selection of chow goo needles. And I got another size 11. And even though they're the same length, the 16 inch, like I said, 
this tip is a little shorter on it. So I was able to cast on 40 stitches easily and knit in the round. So that's what I did. And then I actually did, um, I think, let's see what I, I had to put markers on here so I could remember. This was eight rows. I ended up doing eight rows. And that, that was the perfect size. I cast on 40 and knit eight rows. And I got, this is the uh, stock in it. And then I, sewed it the opposite direction and did the garter stitch. I just, I like, it's just a different look. And what was left over, I have a little bit smaller one. Had I started out and cast on 40 and done eight rows for all of mine, I would have gotten six of the same size one. So I got six and this skein of yarn cost $5.99. So basically these were a dollar a piece. But the downside of this yarn, it was a little bit messy. When you were, when I was sewing the, sewing the ends together, it was shed, so you do not want to wear black leggings using this yarn. And then the other thing I had, I'll put a picture if I can find it. I took a picture of my, my fingernails. I, I wear these gel wraps. They're Dashing Diva gel wraps. And last week I had, they were clear with a little bit of gold sparkle in them, and then my index finger was a gold sparkle. And after knitting six of these, my, my fingernails were pink. My gold sparkle was pink sparkle. My clear with gold was just pink. Uh, it stained my fingernails. So I'd still use it again. Um, I don't care because I love the way it looks. But I think what I might, they might have had it, I don't want to use black because, although you could knit with black leggings on, knitting with the black, I, I'd like a gray, maybe a gray sparkle. I don't, I'm not real sure. If I can find the Christmas yarn, I'll kind of mix these together because I'm going to put these in with, um, I'm doing hair scrunchies, more hair scrunchies for the workers where my mom lives. So those are going to be Christmas gifts for them. So those, that's all my knitting this week. I actually think I got quite a bit done. I still want to start a prayer shawl. I, I, I've got the pattern and the yarn out, but I have to sit and focus because it's a 10 row repeat. So I've not started that. And I am going to try to make a couple of um, ear warmers for the homeless this week. I've got a couple patterns and some bulky leftover yarn. So I think I'll be doing those this week too. But I'd like to read my devotion now from knitpraysure.com. It's called Working Together for a Greater Purpose. And the scripture I used was Colossians 2, 2. I want them to be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. I want them to have complete confidence that they understand God's mysterious plan, which is Christ himself. I don't know about you, but overcommitment sometimes can be a problem for me. And that is not God's will for us. And he also doesn't want us to try to do things on our own either. That's part of the reason sometimes overcommitment, you try to take it on all yourself. And I do need to be careful in this area of my life. There is so much to do for God's kingdom, but I can't say yes to everything. The Knit, Pray, Crochet ministry that I have started through my church is a perfect example. Currently, there is one woman. I call her my top performer. Every week, she brings hats, blankets, um, baby hats. She's committed to make baby so many baby hats, so many baby blankets, so many hats for the homeless, so many hats for the children. She just, in her mind, she wants to do that. And so that's her gift. Uh, could I make more items to donate every week? Of course I could. But then that would stress me out. That's not my gift. My gift was starting the group and trusting God would provide the manpower of the number of needed items for us. And I think I shared last week where our goal is 200 items for the homeless and 200 hats for the elementary school children by mid-November, and we are almost there. I will never be the person who cranks out 50 hats a month or five blankets. I don't, I don't even make the baby blankets. The baby blankets I make, I give to people for baby showers. I haven't, at this point, I'm not at a point where I can make the baby blankets to donate. I'm just, I have so many other things going on. I'm lucky if I get two or three items made per month, but for me, that's good. God gave me the gift of leadership to spearhead the ministry. And the group, you know, we, we're not making these hats. I've talked about this before. We, we don't expect recognition from our church pulpit. We don't get recognized for it, and we're not expecting to. We're doing it because God's called us to do it. It's a way for us to evangelize outside of the church walls. There is power when we do things together. People are drawn toward light. And when I'm with my other sisters in Christ, knitting each week, Together we shine the light of Christ even brighter. In our group, age isn't a disqualifier. The lady that I mentioned who produces the most items for us, she's in her early 80s. She is a, I mean, she is a machine. 
when she broke her wrist a few months ago, I don't have to tell you that our production went way down. But what we missed most about it was that she wasn't there with us. We love her presence. She um, she teaches others how to crochet. She ha always brings in different stitches, and the other ladies at crochet will look at what she's made, and they they will she'll show them how to do the stitch. And she also was one of the people who's instrumental, but really getting the word out about our group. And I really appreciate. I mean, she's been one of my biggest cheerleaders on you know our group and encouraging me to to step out in faith and try to get it to grow. She helped it grow because initially it was just three of us and then she started getting other people to come to it. So I'm very thankful for that. And you know what, if you get a chance, um, her name is Joanne and she's actually going to have heart surgery on Wednesday for a heart valve replacement. So if you think about it, just please lift up Joanne in prayer um, for her heart surgery. That's she is a woman of faith and she is not worried about it. She just knows it's in God's hands. And I, that's another reason um, to surround yourself with other sisters in Christ because it helps your faith journey. It gives you encouragement. She knows how many people are going to be praying for her. And I know that gives her peace. I know she's going to feel the prayers that are lifted up to her on Wednesday morning. And we've also had, uh, when we were knitting at a smaller coffee shop, a mom came in and she had a young daughter, I think she was seven or eight, and we taught her how to use the loom. And she would make hats to donate uh, for our group. And then one another week they brought their neighbor with us, with them that I think she was 13 or 14. We taught her how to, how to use the loom. There is whatever the age, we don't disqualify. We welcome everybody. We want whoever wants to make items for us, who wants to join us in fellowship, we welcome them. They don't have to be a member of our church. That's what I love about our group. We all have a part in growing God's kingdom. When we find our cause, like my group of ladies have, where we can serve, we find our purpose. And not only has knitted, knitting helped guide my hands with what I create, but it does the same for the other women in my group. We know that what we create will warm a person, a child, or a baby's head. This brings joy to our hearts. And it's Again, I've mentioned, we will probably never see the recipient wearing the, what we've made, but we know the love and prayers that were woven into each and every one of them that we, that we know that those prayers are going to be felt by them. Whether or not we physically give it to them or see them in it, we know it's woven in love and prayers. Yes, we can serve Jesus on our own, but when we do it together, it gives life more meaning. And it may be outside your comfort zone to join a small group where you may not know anyone, but what I can tell you is life is better when I connect with other brothers or sisters in Christ. I'm also a part of this couple small group. So there are both men and women in this group that um, my husband goes to me with. It's just, it makes life better to know you have other brothers and sisters in Christ that you can reach out to. And that if you tell, ask them for a prayer, they'll pray for you. So I encourage you, if you are not part of some type of small group, again, you can just start with just two people and then it will grow because we're two or more gather in Christ's name. We are serving him. So don't let that stop you. I mean, like I'd share a woman put uh, in Houston, put out a thing in her church newsletter and they had 20 people show up. She didn't know that it could have just been her and a couple of friends, but she stepped out in faith and did it. I encourage you to do the same. I'd like to end with my prayer now. Father God, Thank you for knitting women into my life who helped me to shine the light of Christ in my community. Continue to lead others to help grow your kingdom using the gifts you have given them. I lift up my sister in Christ, Joanne, who will be having heart surgery this week, as well as any others who have health issues. You know each by name. I pray for those searching for friendships to help them grow in Christ. Open their eyes to where they can serve to meet others who are in a similar faith path. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for episode 53 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. If you like the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and keep knitting, praying, crocheting, and sharing the love of Jesus in your community, however that might, might be this week. Maybe it's just a kind word or opening the door for a stranger. Just love like Jesus everywhere you go.